Next up, uh, we have a little break from HRBMP. If you've been here the whole time, it's been HRBMP marathon. But now, Adam Benemery uh, is going to talk about the machines taking over or something like that. <laughs> Thank you, Greg. <clears throat> My name is Adam Bonemery. I work for the Hudson River Estuary Program at Cornell University. And this is just a small portion of the short nose project in total, but I'll be specifying on counting short nose sturgeon and sonar images with image semantics and machine learning. And before I get into it, I just want to acknowledge the um, Muncie Lenape people and their land. And specifically for this, considering that um, the sturgeon species is so important, I just wanted to do a nice acknowledgement before I started. Um, I keep on changing the slide on my laptop. Okay, so. Focal area, um, the short nose sturgeon, its habitat is the entire Hudson River and its estuary. Well, the estuary up to the Troy Dam. It's an amph amphidromous species, meaning that it um, migrates the salt gradient um, seasonally and according to the spawning. Um, it's one of three native New York sturgeon species. And its migration patterns it uh, is normally spawning in the spring when the water starts to warm. It heads up to the fresh water near um, the Troy Dam. And in the winter is actually when the um, mature sturgeon overwinter. And what you're seeing on that map, that red dot near High Park, which is a uh, river mile 87, is where our surveys focus. You can see a uh, year one figure. Those green dots are. Um, Sorry about that. <clears throat> those green dots are acoustic receivers, and those red dots, it's a transect that our boat would follow. You can see in year two, it grew about double size from 89 square kilometers to 1.68 square kilometers, which resulted in double the data. Um, so a little project overview. This is a population abundance study of the short-nosed sturgeon, funding from the New York State DEC and the Hudson River Foundation. We collaborated with researchers from University of Delaware, Delaware State University, Cornell University, USGS, and New York State DEC. And I wish I could put everyone's name from the estuary program on here, because I really couldn't have done it without them. Um, but they're all sitting back here supporting me. So. Um, so, sorry about that. Um, this project has been over two years long. Last year we had nine days of scanning and 13 days this season. Uh, the difference in days is because since it's a winter survey, um, you can't always get on the water because of the weather variability and ice. Um, <clears throat> We did regular gill netting to determine the species composition, which proved that they are all short nose sturgeon except to spare striped bass and Atlantic sturgeon. Um, this is the hardware we use. It's an edge tech side scanner. And we also dragged a VR100 for the acoustically tagged sturgeon. We did 50 each year, so 100 acoustically tagged, 100 acoustically tagged short nose sturgeon. Um, that figure on the bottom is a good representation of the um, side scanning process. So we try to keep the side scanner five to 10 meters above the riverbed because it's a benthic species and because um, we don't want to hit any bedrock down there, which we definitely have never done that. Um, <laughs> so this meadows is about River Mile 87, and we try to keep the boat around four to six knots to keep the imagery uh, stable, not stretch any fish out. This is what the sonar images look like. Um, this is after processing. So it's a, you can imagine that as a very long image file. Um, these were 
manually clipped and very overlaid using a program called SonarWiz. And it takes an incredible amount of time. So about one day of data equals one day of clipping. And um, manually counting, which is the figure under that, um, all those yellow dots were placed in a program called Dot Dot Goose, which is originally used for um, counting birds. We used it for sonar imagery, and that also is around the same one day of counting for one day of data. So with the first transect, that's like 280 images. The second year transect, that's double that. Um, so you can see that it's a lot of human work. And on top of that, uh, it had to be human checked as well. So you needed a big team and you needed a lot of time. Um, just to give you a good project outline, um, so the size scan sonar data, the counts, will be part of a uh, binomial model estimate, which will be paired with the yield net data and the telemetry data to get a abundance within the focal reach. So this is where we get into the 